Hello and welcome to Chrome Computing. In this video, we were going to be looking at Android apps and how to manage your Android apps. There's lots of different areas where you can look at your Android apps and manage your Android apps. Different areas give you different options, so it's important that you know all of the different options that are available. So the first place where you will be able to manage Android apps is obviously if you've got them on your taskbar down here. So if you had apps down here, you could manage them. So you'd right click. And the only real way to manage your Android apps from here would be to open, which you can do, uninstall, and you can get app info as well. Quickly just minimize that. So you can get app info as well here. Okay, but that only gives you a selection of the apps that you've got down here. The other section is in the launcher there. Click on there and you can see all of your apps here as well. Now uh, I have some grouped, I've got some separate. Again, the only real options you've got is one to open it. Uh, if you right click, again, you've got the option to uninstall or app info. So not many options from the launcher and not many options from the actual um, bar down here. So there's two other places where you can manage Android apps. So Play Store, if you right click on Play Store and then click on My Apps. And from here, let's move it over there. From here, you will see we've got updates. This shows all of the apps that are currently waiting for an update. And it also shows the apps that have recently been updated. You can update them individually if you want to, or you can choose to update all here. If you click on the arrow, most of the times, not all of the times, depends on the people who make the app, it will tell you what the update's about. This one, as you can see, don't give you any information. If you click on the next one, most of them do. So here we go. This one, enjoy 20 new levels in the new episode. Over 785 levels are waiting for you. Performance improved and issues fixed. So that is actually quite good because you don't really care about updating if you haven't got the time or maybe you just don't use it enough or you know, you're just not really interested to see what the update will do, because the update could do something that actually you quite enjoy about what the app currently does, so you might not want to go ahead with the update. So that's a good thing to check before doing an update. Just check on here what the update will actually do. And then here up at the top, we've got installed. Click on that. They've improved this screen by having this here, which I'll show you in a second. It never used to be there. So my issue with this screen previously was it gave you a list of all of your apps, which is fantastic. But what I was concerned about was the fact it didn't have an uninstall option here, which I found really strange. The only option you've got is update, but bearing in mind you already get that option there. So do you really need it here? Um, and the other option is to open but would you come here to open apps? I would think it would be much more beneficial to have uninstall. Um, so that was my concern. Now to fix that, because now up here, you can see they've got storage, they've got 39% used, 33 gigabyte used, that's your storage. But if you click on there, it then shows you the list of all of your apps. And it also shows you how much memory they take up as you can see here. And it also, which is great, gives you the option to uninstall them. So if, for example, we decide this one here, I don't even know what it is. I've obviously used it in the past, but I will get rid of that. Click on that, we can see that's 83 megabytes. And it's got here, free up 83 megabytes at the bottom. And the more you click on, so let's get rid of Adobe Photoshop Express as well. And as you can see, free up to 184 megabytes. So it's a really good way, especially if you're struggling with storage, to go through here and you might not want to get rid of apps, but you, you need to because you need storage. You could go through here, click apps on, um, you could take them off just so you get exactly what you want. So that, that's really good. And then once you've clicked on everything you want to remove, 
Um, I'll get rid of that as well. 420 megabytes. Never use it. War robots. Don't think I've ever played it. Remove that. As you can see, that's I'm already freeing up 1.7 gigabyte, and that's just by removing four apps. So that's really, really useful. So free up 1.7 gigabyte. It just warns you 1.7 gigabyte will be removed from your device. You can cancel or free, and that's all done. So that's really useful. So that is to get to there is here. You right click on your Play Store, and it's my apps. Now the last tab I was a bit confused about, library. So when I've had a look on here, having a look at these, it's not on this device. And then it's got my email address. So I'm thinking, is it on this device for other email addresses? Because I do have other email addresses set up. I don't think that's the necessarily the answer, although I don't know. I know for a fact I installed that a couple of days ago and uninstalled it because it just didn't work. So that would give me the impression it's anything you've uninstalled, but you've installed recently, so it goes into the library. The only thing to go against that is there's an app I uninstalled earlier, which isn't here. And when you get to the bottom on my Chrome box, you get this here as if it's looking for other information, but nothing comes up. But there, if we have a look there, that is the one we have just deleted. So I think the best way to describe this library section is apps that you've installed previously, which you've since uninstalled. And that's quite useful actually, because there are some apps that you will uninstall but you do actually like them, but you may have uninstalled them because you needed storage or there was any other reason why you uninstalled them. For example, there's a game I quite like playing every now and again, and it's there. So instead of having to go hunting for it, so what was the name of that app now? I can have a look in here and go, oh, that's the one, and just install it again. So that's actually quite useful as well. So that's... Um, with the information you can find on the Play Store down there. Now the third place, and this gives you different options altogether, is in your settings. So click on there, and then click on the cog. Let's just go onto the other screen, pull it over. And here we go here. So you click on Apps, and you've got Manage Your Apps. Now again, um, let's, let's ignore that for now. Underneath here, we've got Google Play Store. Click on that, and then from here, you've got Manage Android Preferences. Click on that there, and what this does is it shows you a list of network and internet apps and notifications, and what this is saying is what they have access to, or there's different scenarios. So network and internet, for example, VPN, no. So go back. Apps and notifications. And then it's telling you what's been used there. Special app access here. So this is where you can get the special app access. So apps and notifications. App permissions, special app access. So you could click on there to see what that's about. And here, it's got all of the different things. So what apps are allowed to display over other apps? So you click on that and it shows you the app. So you've got YouTube Music, but not allowed, not allowed, not allowed. Google Play Services allowed, that's fine. Duo allowed because it's for video conferencing. So you want, would want that to show up over other apps. And you've got the Android accessibility suite, which is fine. So these are all very different settings here. Do not disturb access. This is essentially saying, are these apps allowed to override the do not disturb access? None of them are. And uh, you've got notification access, none there. Um, this one, Wi-Fi control, I clicked on here and I found these and I thought, well, that's fair enough, WhatsApp, yeah, I can understand why that might want Wi-Fi control. Google Play Store, maybe to see if I'm using Wi-Fi rather than 
date because it only wants to download over Wi-Fi, but does it need access to Wi-Fi control? However, it's Google Play Store, it's part of Google. I'm quite happy to trust it. Google Play service is the same. But then you've got the two file managers here. Now, I never use these. I've just obviously downloaded them previously to have a look at them. So I was thinking, why would a file manager need Wi-Fi control, which I found really strange. And it was set to allowed, and it still is. But if we close that and go to file manager from the launcher down here. So I'm looking around because I've got something in the web my display just a little bit there. Um, and then if we look for file manager, there, open it up. I've had a look and I couldn't see anything really which would suggest it needs to know have any Wi-Fi controls, images. This is just a file manager. Selling my internal storage, my files, recycling, hidden cabinet, storage analyzer, PC file transfer. I was thinking it's that, PC rock, rock, um, file transfer. That's the only thing I can think of, which must be what it is. However, I'm still not liking the idea of this file manager having access to my Wi-Fi. So it's good for that if you want to install apps, but you're still not very certain about type of apps. It's really good that you can go into here, go into there, Google Play Store, Manage Android Preferences. It's good, apps and notifications, that you have got this, all of this information here. So it's apps and services, Wi-Fi control, File Manager Plus does the same, so I'm sure there's a genuine reason for it. I don't think either of these apps are dodgy in any way, shape or form. I've sort of installed them. However, it is good that I can say no. And I've done that, and I have previously checked, and it had no impact on the program. So it is quite bizarre that it has that option. So I've taken them off. And then you've got usage access as well. They're fine, it just tells you. So that's a good way of looking at what access they have. That's special app access. Go back. As you can see, so in here, totally different settings to what you've got here. This is good to have a look at what apps you've got installed and to um, uninstall the apps, bulk uninstall as well. Here, this is more about notifications. This is getting much more into what the apps are allowed to do to permissions, which is really good. So apps, app permissions, we've done special app access. This is app permissions, click on there. And this goes into more detail as well. So you've got additional permissions, there's three. Click on there, car information. Read instant messages, write instant messages. I think this is all set up for what we're going to be seeing in the future. But we've got telephone there. Um, Google Play, yeah, that's okay, that's all fine. But you've got all of these here, which would suggest, the only thing I've not really understood is telephone permissions that we're in. I would assume anything in here is either asked for the access and you've granted it, or it's asked for it and you haven't granted it, but then you'd have to question why on earth would free sell a game, a card game, need access to telephone permissions. So it's all very bizarre. Either way, it's not had it. So that's, that's a good thing. So it's a really good way that you can check your permissions. Microphone, I think that's a really important one. You want to make sure you check to see what apps have access to your microphone. And as we can see here, the only one is Google Play Services. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, that's most likely so you can talk and say what you're looking for. And I wouldn't have an issue with Duo needing that as well. Again, contacts, it shows you which apps have access to your contacts. So this is really good. This is getting much more in, into down to into the like, granular detail of all of the permissions that different apps have. Um, so that's app permissions, notifications. This is the same what programs have had a notification, I think. Google Play Music, I need to get rid of that app. I don't use it anymore. Right, so if we add it on that screen there, go back on oh, apps and notifications, sound, do not disturb, nothing in there. I don't think these 
let's say anything. So yeah, this is quite bizarre because although you go into manage Android preferences, it's not necessarily about the apps on their own because for example, the storage is that Android preferences. I assume if you click on there, see, it doesn't really take you to, these are all Android services. So it is quite strange to set up if I'm being honest with you, but it's good that you can go in here and check a lot of different things if you want to. So that's all good for apps. And then obviously we went into there, but then you would assume going into apps and then manage your apps is a section we've not looked into. So click on that. And from here, you've got a list of your apps. And if you click on there, you can very quickly pin to shelf, notifications, give them camera access, storage access, more settings and permissions. I don't think there's many in here. You've got to uninstall. Yeah, just camera storage, stuff like that. So in here, you've got uninstall. However, I wouldn't go in here to uninstall programs because like we've said, if I'm being honest with this screen here, apps and manage your apps, I don't see much value of this screen really because it's, it's all about permissions, but you can get a lot more information about that in here. Manage Android preferences, manage apps and notifications, and special app access. I think this is better because it goes into a lot more detail. And in relation to uninstalling lots of apps, like I said, without question, the best option for that is in here. Sorry, right click. My apps, and that doesn't want to open. Oh, there we go. The best way of doing that is in here. Being able to select them all at once. So I think that's a really good look at how you can manage Android apps. It's definitely changed compared to um, six months ago, definitely over for since a year ago. So it's changing. I think some of the changes are additions and some of them are there from previously, but instead of getting rid of them, they've kept them so it's a different place. So you can do some things in more than one place and there's some things you can do in one area which simply isn't available in another area. So it's good to see that there are different sections in your Chromebook where you can find out about managing your Chromebook app or Android app, should I say. Okay, so I've got a bit of a croaky throat, so I do apologize. Um, so I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like below and subscribe to the channel because that's the only way I'll be able to get other people to see these videos and it also supports me in doing future videos as well for YouTube. So thanks very much and thanks for watching and goodbye. Okay, bye.